All right, guys, we're moving on to something that I think is so crucial and so few VAs actually have when they get started, and that is a contract. Now, a contract, I don't care if you're working with the most famous person in your industry or your best friend. It doesn't really matter. You need to have a contract in place. This is just to help make sure everybody's on the same page, to make sure that you guys know what your scope of work is, to make sure that your clients know things like the days of the week that you work, the hours that you work, um, the times that they need to pay you. Maybe you collect your payments at the end of every month. Maybe it's at the beginning. Whatever your details are, you need to make sure that they're going into a contract so that everybody is on the same page. Now, the thing where I think a lot of first-time virtual assistants make mistakes is that they ask other VAs, can I see a copy of your contract? I've actually spoken to a remote lawyer before and she told me that this was a big no-no because if you think of it this way, you don't really know where that VA got their contract either. They could have very simply copy and pasted verbiage from a different website, from a different person. They could have picked out different pieces and put it in this kind of Frankenstein style contract. And the reason she said that's not good is because if you ever do get to a point in your career where there is some legal trouble and you actually need to move forward with uh, taking somebody to a small claims court to get somebody to pay you, your contract, if it's been borrowed from other places, might have verbiage that you either didn't see or didn't understand that could potentially void your contract altogether. So her suggestion was rather than piecing together a contract from other people, that you create a legally binding contract on your own. Now there are two ways to do this. You can actually hire a lawyer, which can be quite expensive, or you can use this tool, which I think is so handy for all freelancers out there. And it is the free freelancer contract from the freelancers union. Now what they've done is they've helped put a standardized process for us to create a contract together for free and, uh, and it's all on the up and up. It's quite legal. And uh, I think it's a really invaluable tool for us as virtual assistants. So what you'll want to do here is either sign up for an account by logging in through your Facebook, your Google, or with your email. And once you sign in successfully, you have a few options here. You can keep it very simple and write up a professional proposal for your services. You can write up a contract or a proposal with a contract. Okay, there's a lot of stuff to go through here, but what I recommend you focus on is the contract. Now, this is when you've already negotiated, pre-negotiated with a client. So let's say you have a new client and you tell them, I'm gonna work for you for 40 hours a month and I'm gonna charge you $3,000 at the end of every month, and uh, you know this, that, and the other thing. When you have everything squared away, you're going to tell them, I'm going to send you a contract with our fine print. So what you'll wanna do is click on the contract itself, and then you're gonna fill in your details as needed, and they keep it very simple. So you'll fill out your company name, and if you don't have a company name, it'll be under your own name. Chances are you are your own point person, so you'll wanna enter your email and your contact name. Now you could enter a business location if you wanted to. I don't find that it's necessary, us as remote people. Um, you might not wanna put your own home address down. It's not often necessary to keep your address if you wanna receive payments. So I personally wouldn't even worry about that section. So let's go ahead and click next. Now here's where you name your project terms. So this could be something like monthly VA services and you'll select your start date. Um, I often find a lot of people when you're doing a VA service, it's more of a long-term relationship. So you might not strictly have a start and end date, um, but what you can do is fill it out to the best of your ability. If there's no end date that you've already set with your clients, don't even worry about setting that. You can just leave it blank. What you'll do is bill monthly or weekly, whatever you've negotiated with your client, and then it tells you the date of your first invoice due. So let's say I've said, I'm gonna start services with a new client in October, on October 1st. The date of the first invoice theoretically would be due on November 1st. That's because you're billing for all of your work in October. And if everything looks good and on the up and up, you can keep moving forward. You can either charge by a flat fee or uh, items. A rate is like your hourly. So if you are somebody who's working hourly, you can then do $30 per hour. And then you can type in your services. So um, it might be, I just, you know, VA miscellaneous because there's chances that you're doing a lot of things for your people. Um, but if you specialize in something, you can do web design or uh, social media marketing, whatever it is that you do. And you can add multiple services here to your contract. Um, you can even require a deposit, which I think makes this tool so powerful because not a lot of other contracts do this. 
So if you're doing some kind of creative work like web design and you require 50% of your monthly payment up front, then you can go ahead and have a deposit amount of 50%. This is something that I think is really handy, especially if you are doing creative work. Um, there's nothing worse than designing a website or cutting a video for somebody and sending that to your client and having your client say, I don't like the work you did, so I'm not gonna pay you for it. That sucks. But if you are doing creative work like that and you've set up a deposit already, then at least they've paid you half of the rate. And if they don't like the project that you delivered at the end and they don't pay, at least you're not out of your money completely. So I think that's a really cool option too. And we're gonna go next, once you have all your details filled out that you like, um, you can edit the payment terms as you need. And so this is like, if they're late, you're gonna add a surcharge of 1.5%. Payment terms, I actually do like to change this, but do whatever is right for you. So um, upon receipt is I think more applicable to VAs. When you send your client your contract, you want them to pay you right away for those services. Project termination notification, that's really handy. This means if your client wants to terminate your agreement or vice versa, maybe you wanna drop a client, this says that legally you will give each other a week notice and you can change that too. It could be two weeks, it could be custom, 10 days, whatever you want. Um, this is really cool too, right to include work for your portfolio. So if you've done work for a creative client, you're saying that I'm gonna use the work I've delivered to you in my portfolio for future use. Um, Non-compete, keep this on no. A non-compete means you will only work for that one client. And if you're a VA, chances are you have multiple clients. So just make sure that that's uh, not selected. Um, a sexual harassment clause, that is really cool. That is something else that makes this tool so, so powerful that not a lot of other contracts put in there. So again, the thing that I like about this freelancers union contract creator is that they really take care of all the nuts and bolts that you probably haven't thought of before. So if you're happy with your terms, you're happy with everything, go ahead and create, uh, create your contract. Here's where you can upload your business logo if you have one. If you don't, just leave it blank, don't worry about it. And here's where you can see to, this is to your client. You can edit it if you've found any mistakes. This is from, you can edit that. This is gonna be from you. Um, and then it includes your scope of work. This is what you're doing for your client, how much you're charging. Um, and again, signatures, this is where when you send this, your client will e-sign this contract, as will you. So you can sign and send the contract at this point. So go ahead and type your name in here. Uh, you can also upload a signature if you have a picture, but uh, it's really, really handy. I find that they take care of everything for you. So you'll add your client's email here, first, last name, and email, and then you will physically hit send. And what uh, the freelancers union will do is they'll send all this legally binding verbiage to your client for your client to review and e-sign. And I really cannot recommend this tool enough. They make it so simple. And again, they include things that chances are you're probably not thinking about for your business. And of course, the best part of this is that it's completely free, it's legal, it's sound. And I think this is one of the most crucial tools that you can use for your business. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, check out our full course on Udemy, the must have tools for virtual assistants. The full course comes with over two and a half hours full of tutorials that are on demand. Be sure to check it out up on Udemy, search for must have tools for virtual assistants, or go ahead and look up our account under FB Office.